when it's on me, I get it's more frustrating. But like because it's not on me at the time, I don't think it's like a. I don't think that's fair. And is it? When I'm the cop reason, you be upset. Yeah, when I was pregnant, I came to you multiple times about how I felt like you were neglecting me in that area, but I never treated you in no way. I let it go, like multiple times. But that hurt your, that hurt your feelings. Really it well. hurt my feelings, and I expressed that to you. But it hurt my feelings because I was pregnant, and my body <clears> was changing, <throat> and I felt like you were there, and you weren't making it be any better. You know what I'm trying to say? And then we would talk about it. You would reassure me that it wasn't me. And I would let it go multiple times. I never dragged it out. But you came I to never... me after your pregnancy and said that my this is something that you really, you even mentioned about yeah. having this conversation on the podcast, but you wasn't ready yet because yeah. it's something that really bothers you. So It did, but I'm saying like I didn't carry any tension with it. We had a great time through the pregnancy and not, we carried that through the pregnancy. Yeah, it ain't. It ain't. Yeah, that's, but that's what I'm but saying. But it, it came up multiple times. Yes, because I was choosing to have the conversation with you, but it didn't come up because I was just being, carrying tension and being mean about it. I came to you. All I'm saying is it hurt your feelings. And that's fine. But when you, I feel like you're saying the only reason why there's no tension in the house is because it's in your court. But I literally handled that super gracefully, even though I felt like it was something that hurt my feelings. So, okay, okay. Maybe I'm not saying it in a way for you to understand. But I'm not saying that you were like absurd or like super angry, but you did have a problem with it. I expressed that it hurt my feelings. Yeah, and it was times where it hurt your feelings and. Your frustration came out. It might not have been the worst way, but it came out because you weren't really giving me a full so, explanation. Fair. So because, but it, that, but it wasn't like I was carrying the tension. Like if I'm coming to you and talking about it, I don't feel like that equates to you're just carrying tension and whatever. Because we're having like I'm trying to have the conversation. With you, so mm-hmm. I'm trying to say, you know, what I'm trying to say if I wasn't trying to have the conversation with you and I'm just like, mm-hmm, mm, da da da, you ain't eating it. I wasn't doing that. I was letting it be, and when the time were permit, the times were permitting, I was trying to have an open conversation about it so that we could speak about it, so I could understand how you felt through the process. And I felt like we had some good conversations out of it a couple of times. You know what I'm trying to say? That's that's what I mean. Like, and I feel like that doesn't carry tension if we're finding understanding in it. You know what I'm trying to say? That that's what I mean. Like, I don't feel so when you say when it's in my court, I feel like that I feel like that's not fair because when I was in my court, no, it wasn't either, and I was coming to you. You know what I'm saying? Respectfully, with com- communication about it, open communication about it, to allow you to feel and, you know, express your concerns or et cetera. Same. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Russ. Right. What you saying? I, I said what I said. No, but you like, you making his face like what I'm saying. That makes no, sense. I, I know it sounds like you ex- had frustration and you okay. was upset. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. But, um. All right. So basically, you don't have frustration when it's time for this, and I do. That's not what I'm saying. This particular time, all I'm saying is, um, maybe because it's light. Like I'm like it's just it's. I want to have sex, but it's not like bothering me because I know the reason and I understand the reason, and I'm okay with that. Right. So then, okay. So say you think I was frustrated. For me, I was pregnant. It wasn't light. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. And I was trying to have a com- conversation about it. So if it wasn't light for you. Do you think you would have handled it the same way? But because Probably you're saying not. it's light, I just think I just think I just think. Understand, think but what about somebody who is not light to and they don't understand? Fair, it? and that's fair. I just think most, not most. I think a lot of times when it when it is because of me, it's not light because <clears throat> whatever position you're in, is for it not to be light. If that makes sense, like is is. I don't want to say never, but most of the times it's not going to be like on on you because it's not light for you. Like you, you deem it as super important. I do too, but I I just think I'm understanding. I don't know. I just feel like you're taking it when you say it like that. You're, you're making it seem like you're the only understanding one in the relationship because that's how it's coming off. It might be coming off like that, but when it comes to this, I think I believe I'm more understanding in this situation. I don't agree, but okay. So, I mean, I guess this drives a, a. I mean, we don't have to go down that, have that conversation, but um, you touched on a very interesting point. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people that have probably gone through things similar in that nature, mm-hmm. like especially with pregnancy. Um, women going through, women go through a whole lot of changes. Um, uh, one of my friends 
any day now, honestly. They might be popping out. The, my nephew might be popping out. And, you know, the body changes, you know, mm-hmm. ex- emotions, all of those things. And he was kind of having a conversation about affirming with that. And, you know, we we're having a conversation about intimacy, but like really affirming your significant other during that journey and that process. And we talked, you, you all talked about it before where you're talking about the emotion of pregnancy, um, but kind of something that he did mention was that stress because it's like where do you go as a man when your your wife is going through all of these changes to release your stress and creating an outlet but then as well for you Shade having healthy outlets to be able to express the frustrations that you may have or stress you know what I mean during those seasons in your life um, so how did you all, because obviously you're here now mm-hmm. and you have had conversations. And again, shout out to you all for being able to have the growth and the conversations that we have on this podcast time and time again. But like having and creating healthy outlets, I think is another form of keeping things fresh. But go ahead. Question. That whole conversation, can we say that for another episode? Because shout out, like it's three of us though, because if y'all all with me, it's fine. But like I feel like that's a great conversation, and we kind of wanted. To, I know it was when we especially specifically sex and pregnancy. Um, that's a great conversation, but I don't think Shade no, it's fine. is up to have it right now because her voice. Okay. I want people to like because that's a great. It's something that bothered her. Something that like I think she would like, like really like has some good points on. But okay. I mean, I I might be wrong. I mean, my, my voice is. Or what it's doing, so. So you you good to have it? Mm. I'm just curious. I, I just I, I mean, I, it it really like. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know what to answer. To be honest, like I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like we, I feel like we already kind of had to get here. Oh. Like no, I don't know. I mean, but just, I mean, like I would like to wait. Like at the same time. Yeah. But I mean, we don't we're have we're to talk about here, it right like, now. But like I, I mean, his question was good. It still, was great. I thought that was, that's why I was like. I don't know really how are we gonna like tie this and like what are we gonna what are we doing here? Like how do we wrap like wrap this? <laughs> <up>? <laughs> All right, guys, great episode. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, so I mean, you the could question keep, was I feel like you could keep it in. Yeah, so the raw, question but, basically um, the question was about um, the outlets yeah. that we used, I guess. Yeah, I mean, do you want me to answer? Yeah, go ahead. It? go ahead. Um, you know, I got a, I got close girlfriends, so you know, and I got really close mom friends already, so you know, I talked about it to. You know, my sister. And, um, you know, she, she went through the same thing. So it's actually a lot of women who go through it. You know what I'm saying? And I think that it is definitely a topic that we can keep for another time. But I do want to say, since we're here, that a lot of women actually go through a disconnect with their partners with when they're pregnant sexually. Um, and it's heavy simply because, you know, we're going through a period of stage where we really can't recognize ourselves anymore. And, like, at that time, we are in dire need of feeling some normalcy. Mm -hmm. Like, somebody, you know, like not somebody, our partner, to make it us feel like, nah, you still the same person. You know what I mean? Even though we're not, we essentially we know that. But it just, to feel like we're still attractive or they still look at us the same to some capacity is very, very important through that time because we are already in our mind worried about so much, worried about what's going on inside our bodies, you know, what's happening. And, you know, all the, there's so many things that come with pregnancy on the hormonal change, whether it's your, your like, for example, like little things like um, your body odor picks up. So I was taking hella showers. I'm using different perfumes and um, lotions because I want to make sure I'm fresh every day. But it's something that, like, people don't talk about pregnancy and it's like you gotta stay fresh like all the time because you're unnecessarily hot you're sweating like you know what I'm saying it's just so much so you're going through all these things and I think I did a great job just through carrying myself through my pregnancy of just keeping myself fresh and keeping my hair done and trying to make sure I looked good so I could feel good so I think that last piece it was like I was doing all the work I could with myself to feel good look good kept myself fresh kept my hair done you know what I'm saying? And the next piece would have been that connected it would have been my partner just kind of like affirming like, nah, you know what I'm saying? You kind of still, and not that Jay didn't, he complimented that I was pretty all the time, but I could just kind of tell, like, and I like I could tell that 
Jay just didn't look at me as a shy baby when I wasn't pregnant. I, and I knew that. And I kept saying, I think I was in a dire need for him to just admit. Like, I was like, just admit that you just can't look at me that way pregnant. And I, I could have accepted that. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, so because he wouldn't say that, like, I was just like, bro, just say that. Because I can understand that as a person. I'm human. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you just put on 40 pounds, you know what I'm trying to say? And I would say that, like, just imagine if you put on 40 pounds and it's in your weight, in your stomach, you would want your girl to still make you feel like something. Like, you know what I'm saying? You would want, like, or if you just got diagnosed with some, you know, woo-woo and your body changed, you know, your hair fell out, you would want your partner, like, please just still look at me like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm something. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to get him to understand that. And it's not that he didn't understand it. I just think, I don't know. Still to the second, I told him the reason why it was touchy for me to talk about because I still didn't, I still didn't really have a full reason. You know, he had put it on work, but after I was pregnant, he had the same job. You know what I'm trying to say? So I was still trying to figure out, like, okay, you still working? Like, yeah, like now you lost your job, but that was just like last week. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I had a baby for two and a half months. You know what I'm saying? So when I first had a baby, you still was working. You know what I'm trying to say? So it was like I didn't understand that. And quite frankly, Jay's always had a plethora of jobs, so it's not like, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't, I ain't really understanding. I think I, st I still don't understand, but in the back of my mind, I understand that it's completely normal for a man to kind of, it's not not look at you the same, but I, I'm, look at me now from when I was pregnant. Like, I'm, I look like two different people. Like, not two different people. I was still, you know what I'm saying? But in pregnancy, like, when you want to feel the most beautiful because you're carrying a life, like, you know what I'm trying to say? I just feel like, you know, we kind of like lost and got lost in translation a little bit there. So, but, you know, I had the outlets I had I, was my own understanding. You know what I'm saying? I was heavy in prayer at, through my pregnancy too. So I was heavy in my bag just trying to like keep myself grounded because I was going through a lot of changes within my body and your mind goes with your hormonal. So I was doing the work to try to stay in a positive mindset because I didn't want nothing to affect my baby. I was like, no, stay happy, stay positive. So I did a lot of work with that. So it didn't. That really affects, sorry. Yeah. I, I didn't know that 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 your mental oh yeah affects the. the yeah, wow. mental. Your baby is attached to your nervous system. So whatever my nerves are feeling, my baby feels. Mm. So I was heavily on, like, I don't want to feel nothing abnormal. Like, I need to feel calm, whatever, which is why I'm. I heavily believe that Alani is the way she is. She's, like, super, like, lax. Of course, if she's hungry or is going through something, but she's a super lax baby. But I, And she, you can tell she just feels love. Like, she, she's a love baby. But I feel like, you know, I made sure that, like, that was her environment inside, and I try to make sure that outside. Like, and and that's why she also is attached to me in ways because I calm her nervous system because I don't want her, like, stressed. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? And I was, I was, I've been like that since she's been in my womb. Um... Just her having the commas environment inside and outside, you know what I'm trying to say? Which is why I think she didn't want to come out. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? She was content. She was cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? There was nothing going on in there. She wasn't stressed out. Yeah. So. No, I feel you. No, I, I mean, you know, when you was pregnant, it was it was a few things. You know, in the beginning, we were dealing with some things. And that was that. But, like, towards the middle and the end, as, as your stomach got bigger, it was, like, um, different for me. Right? Mm -hmm. And... I don't know, it was hard. It was it was like it just like part of me felt like it was weird. Like I didn't want to like I don't know, it's like I couldn't do it how we usually do it. So it's just different. And you know, like when things are different, um like we kinda like shy away from what's different. Right. So like it was just different. And another part of it it just was, I mean, <laughs> it wasn't that I wasn't attracted to you. It just I, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I really I can't even put the my mind I can't even put my thoughts to words to be honest. Cause like for me it was just like man I'm just trying to have a healthy baby too. Right? I just want to I focus on doing what we gotta do to have this baby baby as healthy as we can. And like I don't know I just didn't, wasn't associating sex with anything. I just I I just couldn't I don't know. It's hard to explain because like still to this day I just can't. It wasn't that I wasn't was, attracted to you though. It just it was crazy because like. In my last week, I was trying to get the baby to drop down. And I was really frustrated with Jay because we went to the doctor and the doctor was like, walk, have sex, 
These are all things that will bring the baby down. And Jay looked at me like, well, we could just have sex. And I was so irritated with him. Because I'm like, this whole time, like, now you want to have sex? Like, you know what I'm trying to say? So, like, I don't know. I think it's definitely something, like, like I said, we, we, we should unpack it in another episode because, like, it's just so much more yeah. to it than that. But just to say, my outlet was my sister. You know, shout out to Paris. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's a great mom. And she's, you know, she understood, you know, a lot. And, you know... Her in Diamond, shout out to Diamond. They really held my hand through that because it was hard for me. And I was also trying not to let it consume me in any way. You know what I'm saying? I had to still show up, you know, and, you know, feel my best. And um, due to me having outlets and prayer and my friends, I wasn't, like, letting it consume me, which is why I was able to, like, have conversation. Like, yo, let's talk about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes, like you said, like, some things, like, I could have let it, like, consume me and, then, like, didn't want to talk about it. Like, just, you know what I'm saying? But... I didn't really let it drag me to a point where, like, you know what, after pregnancy, like, you know what I'm saying, like, bet, like, you know what I'm saying, ooh, um, but it's crazy because uh, there's actually a whole TikTok forum on it, like, you know what I'm saying, it was crazy because I was looking at it, it was just, the reason why I think it's a separate co- conversation because it was so many women who were sad because their, par- their par- partner went and touched them while they was pregnant, and I was like, damn, that's crazy, like, I didn't I didn't feel sad about it. No, I did. I, it hurt my feelings, but I didn't feel sad about it. But I was like, that's how I knew it was just a sensitive topic because I was like, damn, this is like a common thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I was trying to just unpack the why, though. You know what I'm trying to say? So even when I hear you say, like, I, like, I don't really have an answer. It's crazy. Like, I feel like a lot of men might feel like that. You know what I'm trying to say? So I think it's just important to just talk about in general because clearly a lot of men feel like that. And I just, I think it's just important to unpack the why. Like, what is it? Where is it stemming from? I mean, I I, I do apologize. Well, I, I want to apologize if that, like, hurt, you know what I'm saying? Because I can mm-hmm. understand that. Like, you put, you had some great examples. Like, if something drastic happened to me, I would still want you to love me the same. Mm-hmm. And, um, I don't know, it wasn't that I didn't love you the same. I just, again, I, I, I wish I had the words, but, um, and this might not make it no better, but if I would have known that it, it hurt you to that point, I would have made more of a conscious. But I told you. Yeah, I I, just, I still I just thought you just was like finding things to mm-hmm. be honest. To be honest, I just thought she was mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you you was pregnant hormones. I thought she was just like just having issues to just be mad at. To be real, wow. I didn't understand yeah, the magnitude answer. of the pain. You know what I'm saying? Like I just didn't. I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like I uh and like because I want to give you closure, like. Yeah, I didn't feel, I didn't want to have sex, but it wasn't like, <clears throat> I don't know, like, it wasn't personal for me, if that makes sense. I don't know how to explain it. I really, I wish, I wish I could, because I, I I'm not lying, it's just, yeah, part of me wasn't as attractive because you was pregnant, but, but still, even still though, I think I told you this before, not, not making no excuses, yo, we see how we hang out, we drink, we, we party, we, a lot of things. I do feel like I lost a friend when you was pregnant. When you was pregnant, mm. and I can't say that. So a lot of times when we are having sex or when we when we doing whatever, we're in like friend mode. We're like drinking, we're chilling, we're talking, we're like we're in friend mode. And I feel like I lost a piece of you when you were pregnant. Like you wasn't, we wasn't doing what we used to do. We couldn't drink. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't really going out at all. So all we had to do was. Be at home without problems. So what like problems that we have, like just anything, like the house problems, the, the 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 money problems, the whatever. And it's like, it's like, how can you really do an enjoyable act when you're surrounded by the problems all the time? What's I, the difference now? Like we, bro, we turning up right now. We drink, we we talking, we having podcasts. This like we talk about that sapiosexual thing. Like I don't think we had many sapiosexual moments during pregnancy. Like I, I, do you? Do would you? Do. I mean, I don't know. Like I feel like I don't know. Like it's crazy because like since we started the podcast again, I told you I was like I felt like I had a good pregnancy. Like overall, where it was just like I felt like it was simple, it was peaceful, whatever. So it's weird. Like when I hear you say like basically you weren't having a good time. No, but so it's like it almost made me feel like I was in it by myself. No, but just because we wasn't having a good just because we wasn't having a good time drinking and stuff don't mean that your pregnancy wasn't peaceful. But when I hear you say 
we weren't doing anything. We were just kind of at home with our problems. I'm trying to sit back and, like, I like I don't understand. But we wasn't doing anything. We wasn't going out. We wasn't. Like, we not didn't. partying, but we were cooking out every other day. We were on the grill having fun at the pool, having people over. That's what I'm saying. Like, when you say that, I'm, I'm still a little, like, it, like, makes me feel like we were living two separate lives at that time. I mean, in a way, we were, though. Yeah. Like, you were pregnant. You yeah, we could have cookouts. I wasn't. I was drinking. And then when I'm done, like, I can't just come hot more. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just. But you could have. You know, um, something that I commonly hear, again, I'm the single friend that don't got no kids, mm-hmm. but everybody around me is, like, pregnant right. or married. And so I find myself in a place of hearing these conversations, but can't give no advice because I don't know nothing about it. Right. Mm-hmm. So. I'm going to play this role. I'm going to play that role in this situation. But uh, what I found in a lot, because one of my homeboys, he got married at 23. And I kid you not, bro has had a kid every year since he got married That's in 2018. Wild. Bro got four kids. Shout out my brother, Peter, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, shout out my brother. Every and um, I just remember with the first child, he was like, uh, he had to overcome that. And Please don't kill me for telling this story. I pray that <laughs> this is a safe space. But for the sake of this conversation, um, he was afraid of hurting the baby. And a lot of different stress factors and things of that nature that he was handling in preparation for the baby, that wasn't on his mind. And I wonder if that's something that's common with a lot of men. Is like we're so wrapped into preparing for when the baby arrives that we're not like we had the conversation of being present but absent at the same time like present physically but absent emotionally because there's so much things and not to take away from all the things that you're going through cuz you the one, you're carrying the child and everything but i feel like i just wonder as men if we get so anxious without speaking it physically like what we're feeling that we're not able to even see like okay you brought the conversation to but like Again, he just mentioned in, in full transparency, like he wasn't able to see the magnitude of it because of wherever your mind was. But I remember in that particular instance, he was just like, bro, my mind is like literally on the due date. I don't know when that day is, but like that's where my mind is right now. And every day in between is just like a sprint to get to a destination that you don't even know what it's going to look like because mm-hmm. nobody can truly prepare you for par- uh, being a parent. And while this was the first child, his first child, and while you have already experienced it, I'm just curious to, with men in general, if this is something that everybody goes through. Because you talked about women. Um, and we don't have to get too much into the conversation. because too we late. No, I mean, we here. <laughs> but, but, yeah. I was, I, like, to be honest, like, towards the end, like, again... I'm trying to take accountability, but, like, I also want to be real in my feelings, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it was a lot. Yeah, just because it was peaceful don't mean that it didn't come with anything. Like, towards the end, you were tired, bro. Like, you, like, you didn't, how can I say this? And, again, just listen with y'all hearts if y'all can. If y'all can. You wasn't the most approachable sexually either, though. Like, it wasn't like. You gave up, you gave off like this energy, like I want to get fucked. It was like, it it really wasn't like that. You didn't give me that energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it was like, I'm trying to deal with your emotions, your feelings, and like, and so many other things as well. Because again, you can be, you are straight, you got a lot of things going on in your mind. And I'm just trying to, I'm trying not to step on an egg. You know what I'm to be honest, right? So like, sex was like the furthest thing away from me, to be honest. And like, especially towards the end when like you were just frustrated, like, yo, Bro, like this is the hardest part. Like, I'm I'm tired of carrying it. It's heavy. Like you was like like because I don't want to say complain. I don't want to say like no. I'm not trying to make it negative. I'm just trying to. She was going through a lot of things. Yeah, you were going through a lot. So, I'm like, the I'm trying to cater to you and be there for you, in every way possible. And sex is literally like the furthest thing away from what I'm thinking about. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm trying to say like it wasn't personal because it wasn't. But I'm still understanding, like, your, your your frustration, your sexual frustration as well. So you said at the end, what about before that? In the beginning? We had, hey, practically, it's a full 10 months, babe. 
Mm. Right. The first five months can be the beginning. Okay, if that's what you feel. Six through ten. What about it? Or six through, what, seven? Eight? Whatever. In the beginning, babe, I feel like... Try not to, like... It was just hard, Ray. What was happening in the beginning? Am I missing something? Mm. It was hard, Ray. What was hard? We were going through some things. What was going through? It's it's probably not for the podcast. Okay. I really don't even remember, so we can talk about it after the podcast because I really don't know what you're talking about. Okay. And that's fair. Y'all don't have to talk about it. We are going to respect the fact that y'all said that. The full conversation doesn't have to happen today. Um, but, again, thank you all for sharing that and being vulnerable. Yeah, so, but outside of that, though, it, it was sounds like high opportunities and I didn't take offense. I definitely want to take my responsibility for it. And, um, again, I just, it was hard, man. It was hard for both of us. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just, I just wasn't thinking about sex. And if that hurts you, I apologize. And I, and I didn't mean anything by it. But um, I don't really, there's nothing else I could like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wish I could say something that could give you closure in life and and um, comfort for your feelings. But all I can do is just own it, you know what I'm saying? Like, that wasn't what I was focused on at the time. And it wasn't anything personal. I still love you. And I wanted everything to work out with our child. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What month did y'all get engaged? Sorry, just taking. June. How, how many months was that in? Two like eight? nine. What do you mean? Or eight. Eight months I was, in. I was, I was six months at our, at our uh, engagement. June? July? August? You had Alani in uh, August. Oh, I was seven months. Probably I'm eight. Just, July, August, nine months, eight months. Only reason why I bring it up is just like, again, just thinking about the mindset of everything that y'all had a lot going on from the outside looking in. Because I'm just like thinking seven about because June, June to fifth. July, July to August, it's two and a half months. So I was about to seven months. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. It, I only reason why I brought it up again is just to think about the the mindset, and it, and again, you're. You're thinking about three different things at the same time, which is kind of interesting uh, from the outside that uh, being a provider in the sense of, I mean, and you already were probably prepared to do that, but taking another step to become a husband, a father of another child and continue to do, and just evolving in the role that you're already doing as a provider in a sense. And I can understand I'm not trying to be an apologist or anything. Like, that is a lot. But then for me personally, because this is a growing experience for myself and I'm growing through having this conversation because I do hope to be a father one day, um, really trying to learn. And this could be a conversation for another time again, but, like, how to be present. Like, we literally continue to how to try to be present as best as possible for your significant other in that moment in time. And I believe that based off of what you're saying, you saw all of the other things and and I guess sacrifice, you saw it as a sacrifice for yourself, but then also it was a sacrifice for her because this is something that she wanted. So yeah, sex, I, but I, only thing I can do about that conversation is just apologize because that's what I'm saying. And honestly, bro, sex was the last thing on my mind. Like literally like, and I'm, I can't, I'm trying to be just empathetic with the conversation because it was like, I think I had two jobs at that time. I forgot when I lost my 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 first job. Like, I'm you gotta understand, bro. Like, I'm trying to keep these two jobs. Like, I'm not worried about sex. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just like it's just just be honest. You feel me? Like, I just wasn't <clears throat> worried about sex at and no form of capacity. Like, if it was going to help her, like ease, like um, get Alani out because I know it was really frustrating for her. I was willing to do that because I seen how much pain and how frustrating that. The end of the pregnancy was, you know what I'm saying? So I was willing to do that because 
I wanted you to feel some comfort. You know what I'm saying? Like, just being honest. But outside of that, in the beginning, like I said, the beginning, we had some things that we was dealing with that, you feel me? But, like, for, towards the middle, it just, I just wasn't. I just, bro, I had a lot on my plate, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's That's just fair. a lot. And I think we talked about this because in one of the episodes, I, I said, as selfish as you make it sound, it's funny how, like, you know, like when a woman would get pregnant, I feel like everybody, like, is concerned about the woman. And they should be because she's carrying the child. I'm not mad at that. But sometimes as a man, you feel overlooked. And it's like, yo, what about me? Right? Like, well, damn, like, my feelings is, doesn't matter because she's the one that's pregnant. So she can, we talked about this in one of the episodes. I forgot the episode. But it's like everything is about her. Right? And she would say everything is about the baby because people overlook her. And so I feel like at a moment, mm. we're both feeling the same because it's like, I'm like, yo, well, what about my feelings? Everything is justified because, you know, um, pregnancy hormones and X, Y, and Z. And I suppose just understand it, but like, damn, I, I got feelings too. You know what I'm saying? So in that moment, I just was dealing with a lot. Like, I was dealing with a lot. And it's hard to express that when your woman is pregnant. Like, I can't come to you and say, I'm dealing with a lot and you pregnant. Like, even saying, even saying it on a podcast, somebody somewhere is like, you couldn't be going through half of what she was going. Like it's a it's a lose lose conversation. So it's like I had, I was just dealing with what I was dealing with, how I was how how I, the best way I knew how. You know what I'm saying? So I was just just trying to you know what I'm saying? Like I still to be you was pregnant. I still wanted some head or something. Like I wanted you to come meet like, but you like, bro, I'm pregnant. Like it was. Uh, I think it was a. Uh, um, I want to say power struggle, but I think that was part of it too, though. A culture shift, I think. Yeah, because like I, I want you to come, like, still be affectionate with me, but it's like you looking because you're pregnant for me to come and be that for you, but that never been me, right? So it just, it just, it it was different for me, like you know what I'm saying? Because like, like you said, like that's never been me. You feel me? But I be wanting it from you. Make sense? Yeah, I think I'm just. I I think what's hard for me to understand that I hear what you're saying, but it's like you know I lost my jo- you know I had lost a job whatever. So what's the difference now? Because you still just said I want to have sex. You just lost a job. You don't have neither one of them. We're going through money problems. So we're always in a stand a, a situation where it's some struggles. You get mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say. But now I'm not pregnant now. It but it's I want to have sex. You get what I'm trying to say. So like as a woman, like okay we had problems then. You didn't want to have sex, but we have problems now. You want to have sex, like make it was the only common, den- the only denominator, the only not even denominator, the only factor there is that I was pregnant then and I'm not pregnant now. Yeah, but like, I'm, so I'm it also just feels like I don't know. Like, I'm trying just, to give you some affirmation yeah. or confirmation that that was a part of it too, though. That because you were yeah. pregnant and and that did have and I that did play a part of it too. Like you, yeah, I'm, I like, understand that your body was changed just, and it was I just different want, from you. I, I just needed to be clear, like that's hard for a woman to process like that's like if you again i keep using the analogy of you because god forbid the tables don't turn you get what i'm trying to say but if if it was to ever turn and the only common name denominator was you and how you looked you know what i'm saying how and what you were carrying it's the only reason why i didn't want to touch you or do something with you like that would make you feel away that would make anybody feel away and it would make me feel like well don't t- don't want me now like i could literally easily turn around i'm like well don't want me now because i was I'm not going to be pregnant forever. That's like a, something that women say all the time. I'm not going to be pregnant forever. I'm going to lose the weight. I'm going to get back to me. I'm not a person who loses myself in my like uh, in pregnancy and my kids. I always, uh, I care about how I look. I care about her. I'm, I'm not going to be that way forever. So when you're not there forever and now the table, like when it goes back to like, oh, I'm, it's like, it's almost like back then they want me. Now they now I'm hot. They all on me. Don't want me. You know what I'm trying to say? And I'm not saying that's how I'm moving, but that's how it could feel. Like you ain't want me then, don't want me now. You know what I'm saying? And I'll be honest. Like I hear what you're saying. And I empathize with you too. However, I, I only can walk in my shoes. And that right there is the same reason why in my head I was like, would you even want to carry another baby? Like I thought about that before because it's like I don't want to go through that again. I don't want to be disconnected in my relationship again. I don't want to. And women think like that. Like it's like, do I want to deal with that again to feel like I'm carrying a child, whatever. And now this is happening. And, I, you know, I, we having a power struggle because I'm carrying a baby. You feel away. I feel away. It's like nobody wants to go through that shit again. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like and it, it, it and it's the true factor. Like that's just a real scenario. Like that can make and 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 shy a woman of wanting to carry another child. Like you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to deal with that again. I don't want to be like like damn. Like 
having to pick myself up and like making sure I keep myself positive because I feel like my partner is it doesn't look at me a certain way and it's like damn but I, I'm carrying your child like you know what I'm saying I don't I, I personally don't want to feel that way and I know women who didn't like when they felt that way and didn't want to feel that way so you know I hear you and I empathize with you but that's your reality and this is my reality you know what I'm trying to say so it's just it's, it's definitely a I don't know like it's it's definitely um and that's why I say like you know like at the end of the day I understand it for what it is but I can't say that I fully feel like I have closure from it at all um any closure I'm getting from it is on my own accord because I'm just choosing to understand it in a certain light and I'm not mad at you but I can also see it for what it is if you ask me I see it straightforward for what it is and, and what's now, that? I, I feel like at that point like it didn't matter if I was pregnant or not um you were in your, you were feeling how you felt and due to that I wasn't able to get the full catering of what I felt like I deserved in my pregnancy hmm. and that's just straight up and that you don't have to agree to that but that's me that's how I feel no I mean I you know I think I don't know <clears throat> We have differences on, on. It's not really about the sex and the pregnancy. I, I already expressed that, but it's like earlier, um, or when I was saying one of the episodes, when I was saying uh, things outweighing things, even though it's more. And like me, it's hard to hear that because it's like. I don't know, bro. But that's why I say I think it's so hard sometimes for men and women to have conversations because we look at things differently, right? I'm trying to be respectful of your feelings at the same time. Stand up for myself. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I'm not stand up, but just express my feelings because the fact that that can be, that can weigh so much when I was so many other things. Hmm. Right? So it's like, to think that like, I wouldn't want to have another baby by you. Or not saying you can say that verbatim, but it's like the fact that's a thought. And I'm like, bro, I was, I was so much, I was so many other things. Like when I don't know, when 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 it was time for working and it was hard, and I'm like, nah, like, like, let me take like it was like I was so many other things, but because I like that, it seems like that's the end of the world. And I don't think that's fair. Like, yeah, it, it could be a big thing, and I get that. But I just feel like sometimes we got to do a better job at con controlling our emotions and how our emotions and not allowing our emotions to control our mind. Because, like, yeah, it can be a hard thing, but it's like, is that really worth everything else? Like what you just said, like, I, I, like, I, it, I know you're not saying it, but it's like for somebody to be like, well, no, nah, I don't want to have enough baby by you because I don't want to feel like that. I get it. But what about all of the, the, the positive feelings that you felt that outweighed? So that one thing <laughs> outweighed everything so i don't know if you may know her name but she was on um she she's the commentator for the women's track like she she does commentary for track she's jamaican she used to run track uh she also um did uh, housewives of atlanta felix or something. her name she's no. jamaican she, her her people's own jerk jerk uh jamaican me crazy uh she literally does the commentary for the uh track track and field, mm -hmm. track and field. why you find that her and her husband had the same conversation, and her husband wanted another baby, and she told him no. And it was causing a little tension in the house because she did not want another baby. She doesn't want to leave him. She does not want another baby. It was the further reasons because she felt like a lot of parenting and things fell on her. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot for her. What I'm saying is I hear what you're saying, but carrying a baby is only, like you said, you weren't. we were having two different experiences. We were having a whole different, you were thinking this, I'm thinking this. I can't do this. You could do this. You were doing this and I'm not. And we're having two different experiences. At the end of the day, I'm not saying I don't want to be with you or that I don't want to. Yeah, you are all these other things. And just because I say that these things affected me don't mean you're not those other things. But it can also still alter the fact that like bringing a kid in and me going through those experiences is hard for me. So why put myself in those situ situations? I'm not saying that is what I'm saying in the end all be all. You know what I'm trying to say? I've spoke to you already about having another child. However, yeah, it is heavily considered due to what I went through through my pregnancy. So due to that, I'm not leaving you and we're not 
breaking up because of it that to me seems like the end of the world no but it does make me heavily consider like uh do i want to go through that again and i think that's normal for anybody to feel uh do i want to deal with that again do i want to feel in those spaces is that healthy for me is that health going to be healthy for my baby that i'm carrying and i think to think anybody shouldn't consider all the factors while they're pregnant in pregnancy of what they went through the previous pregnancy i think that's unfair Sonia Richard Ross. Sorry, what was her name? Say it again. Sonia Richard Sonia, Ross. Sonia, right. So her and her husband talked about this, and it was on like Housewives, uh, um, Housewives of Atlanta when she was on there. And they had the same issue. And she was just like, she didn't want another kid, but it doesn't mean she was divorcing him. She still wanted her husband. She still loved her husband. She just didn't want to have another kid because it's heavy. To mm. carry is heavy. To deal with all those things is heavy. It's a lot. Like, you know what I'm saying? And one person is carrying that load. You know what I'm trying to say? And yeah, like you said, you are carrying loads too, but we still are living two separate worlds, as you said, at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So you are all those other things. You did all the do that, which is why we're not breaking up over it. But it does, it, it will make you consider like, damn, shit, do I want to be in that situation again? Because honestly, that's too much. You know what I'm trying to say? And I think that's normal. Mm. I just think that's normal. I'm glad we could have this conversation because <clears> I feel like um, I didn't know that it well before you told me I didn't know that the sex thing was that big of a deal. It's not sex per se. I think what it is is the feeling to be feel wanted. Hmm. And I think that's where it boils down to. And when you minus the sex and the other and the the pieces that come with sex and I'm not talking about like physical contact but the the flirting, the I want you, the like it is the desire of your person and that is what's attached to it and I think that is what's causing that causes that not the actual sex it's what leads up to the sex it what's it was it's what brings like the union the, the the togetherness of like just intimacy of just feeling like damn like you want me still like it's not just the sex you know what i'm saying so i don't want to highlight that as like oh that's some like i'm some nympho that needs this no it's just the desire like that's how we got here you know what i'm trying to say like you know like don't make me not feel one and now. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah. No, that's, that's, that's real. That's deep. I like that. I think, um, I don't know. I, it's not really a takeaway for me, but it's just, I don't, I, don't, I wish I, I wish, um, you ain't had to feel like that. Because I never meant to make you feel like that. I mean, I thought, I, I told you you was beautiful all the time. Like, it's just, I don't know. That was, that was my bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, to put a bow, like this isn't one of those conversations where there's a, a, I think it's a learning. Yeah, uh, hopefully thing. people can uh, watch this and under and see like, oh, well, my yeah. woman, that's a big deal. You know, and, and for people that are listening to this conversation to take into consideration seasons, Right, and how to love during different seasons, what intimacy looks like in different seasons, and you know, just having the conversation and maybe sometimes having the conversation more than once to under you know, so uh, and 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 again, thank you to you both for having this conversation because it's a very vulnerable, real thing that n- many people deal with. and. There's a lot of children that are being born every day. There's a lot of people that go through pregnancy. Some people go through pregnancies in, the, in addition to what they're, the, there's risk. You know what I'm saying? You talk about mortality with black women, especially within the black community. So there's a lot of risk that come with pregnancy, especially within the black community. So uh, I just want to say thank you because I learned a lot. I'm not going to lie. Like, again, this is something that I aspire. This is something that is at the top of my list. It said, be a father. So to be able to hear this conversation, I can say that I'm truly blessed and just continue to, I mean, man, bro, like, this is for y'all. Mm-hmm. They're listening, but this is for y'all. Um, four years ago, I don't know how this conversation would have gone. Yeah, I was thinking mm-hmm. that. <laughs> like, I was thinking that. Four years ago, I don't know how this conversation would have gone. But like, to be able to sit here and see the growth like, there's a lot there, you know what I mean? And I just want to give you both your flowers to be able to have real conversations and continue to share 
This is the good news, man. And it, you just see God moving in and through each and each and each one of you all. So um, all that to say, just thank you for sharing this thank conversation. You. I don't know if there's anything else that y'all wanted to add, but no. man, it was a it was a great conversation, and I can say that I am blessed from hearing it. It was real. It was a moment where I was like, "Dang, I never would have thought about this." You know what I'm saying? Like I'm thinking like I'm gonna keep it a bean. I'm mm-hmm. thinking like you know working and this that, but that's so many of us as men. But then at the same time, it's not just all about us. Mm-hmm. You you are you are a living, breathing being that's also carrying one. Um, so and there's so many different factors in there. So I, I just wanted to say thank you for sharing both of you sharing this vulnerable moment in your journey. 